If you're a musician, music business is probably the last thing you want to worry about. It's probably the bane of your existence. It's probably something that you don't like thinking about because you want to focus on the art and I get it I'm the same way but in order to make a living and in order to feed ourselves in order to continue making music we kind of have to learn how to navigate this thing hey what's going on everyone this is Nick if you're new here I'm a guitarist based in Brooklyn New York and today I'm gonna to be doing a quick book review on this book called the new music industry if you're interested in purchasing this book check out the link in the description there's an affiliate link down there which means that I'll get a small cut if you buy the book and it's at no further cost to you it's really just kind of a way to support the channel if you like what I'm doing but again no obligation now I don't normally do these kinds of book review videos but I saw this one video by Ali Abdal called how I remember everything I read and I was kind of inspired by that because generally book learning is like a great way to learn topics from the source and at your own pace and like you don't have to make a lot of noise you can read it like 3 a.m. and it's all good at least that's what I do and funny enough when I was reading this book one of the things he says is reading books is a key component to personal development some people like it some don't in either case you should set yourself a daily or weekly quota ie 10 minutes a day you can enjoy the benefits of reading even if you don't particularly like the activity. And that's from chapter five based on his chapter on personal development. So I figured if I started making book reviews, it would kind of force me to finish the books I read and it would kind of force me to teach it to someone, which in my opinion is also the best way of learning things. So if this is the type of thing that you enjoy, leave it down in the comments if you want to see more of this. If you don't like it, also leave it down in the comments so I can kind of just gauge your interest on this stuff. But anyway, so let's get into this book. So this book was definitely an interesting read and had a lot of different topics and a lot of ways you can kind of navigate the music business industry. One of the pitfalls I felt about this book though is that it was a little superficial in the topics in that it gave a lot of different topics but it didn't go into as much detail as I would have liked but that's also because I also have some experience with some of these things so I kind of wanted a more specific guide but if you're a younger artist maybe you're like in high school or college or you're just kind of starting out your music career and you're kind of like looking at the options it's a perfect kind of sampler of how you can make money doing this thing and for me if I read this at 18 it would have clarified a lot of things because back then I thought the only two routes were performer composer this book clears up all of it and how you can navigate even if if you do want to be a performer or composer. Another pitfall of this book, which isn't really specific to this book, but kind of more specific to books on the music industry, is that it gets dated real quick. As the world progresses, as we get more technology, as we get more social media platforms, things are bound to inevitably change. And right now we're experiencing a really rapid growth of technology. So for 2021 me, it doesn't touch up on TikTok or how to use that or anything like that because it didn't exist back then. This book was from 2015. But on the other hand, it does still have relevant information like Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and a few other things. So there's definitely a lot of content that's still viable but one example of ways that it's not viable is that he was talking about how myspace is making a comeback this was back in 2015 i don't know if anyone on here uses myspace anymore i certainly don't and haven't since middle school but it kind of just is what it is so now i'm going to go over the good points of this book and what i thought were the good points so one thing that i really enjoyed is that he kind of gave like a brief overview of all the social media platforms and who they're for and how they kind of work and one thing that he stresses on a lot is the fact that as far as social media goes you have to find what's personally going to fit you and that not everyone's going to fit the same box so for example like youtube might be a good platform for me but if you're watching this and you're like how do i make my music career better youtube might not be a good platform for you you might want to look to other platforms but he was saying to basically kind of just figure it out and one quote that I specifically like if you have the book this is from page 243 chapter 14 is setting up a social media profile and properly branding it will always take an upfront investment of time therefore it might be wise to tackle one or two tools at a time and get a feel for them which I wholeheartedly agree with you know like we're kind of focusing on our music we don't have time to be really present on all of our social media platforms or otherwise we get really burnt out and we wouldn't really have any music to promote at that point another thing I really like is that he acknowledges his own pitfalls and his own shortcomings and he kind of of uses them as anecdotal evidence like hey here's what not to do this is what I did and it didn't quite work out so it's kind of like so you don't make the same mistakes that he made when he was doing this kind of stuff another thing that he really emphasized was having a diverse stream of income which when I was younger I didn't really understand the concept of my dad was a graphic designer so I kind of knew about that but I mean for me it was like the traditional like one full-time job kind of deal but as a musician in the modern age you kind of have to diversify especially with companies like Spotify playing you per stream or like having YouTube AdSense revenue you you can make a good living as a musician but you have to kind of know where to find the money and how to kind of navigate that so he goes over a lot of that kind of stuff and then finally another good thing was that at the end of every chapter he included actionable steps so like steps you can take right now if like these are something you want to enact so if you wanted to start a youtube channel he says okay these are the things you have to do today that you can do right now that you don't have need anything for that you can start taking so for example creating a youtube channel creating a youtube account posting your first video. If you have your video recorded, just post it already. So it was a really good guide in that sense. For me and my personal taste, I didn't really find the summary recap that necessary because I like just read the information, but that's also a personal preference kind of thing, not necessarily 
the universal good bad thing. And so now I want to talk about some of the bad points. So for me, I felt like this book was really good, but at the place that I'm at right now, it didn't feel so useful. Again, I said this at the beginning because I wish you would have kind of gone further into the topics and they're all kind of a superficial view, but there's still a lot of nuggets of evidence that I found throughout the book. And again, if I read this book when I was 18, this would have totally blown my mind because there's a lot of really good information. And then another aspect, which is kind of a nitpicky thing, but the font size and the book pages were really big. So I was really kind of just like speeding through the book and I felt like there was kind of less content than I expected because of the page size and the font size. I don't know if you'd share the same thing, but to me, that's kind of superficial. So that doesn't matter as much. It's really the content that matters. But that was like a little nitpicky thing that I felt. But despite that, I think I also read fast because he had like a really natural tone and he was, it felt like you were speaking to a friend. It didn't feel overly formal and it felt his writing style was a style that I really liked and resonated with. So that could also be another reason why I read through it so fast. So would I recommend this book? I would definitely recommend this book for a few people. If you're like in high school or you're in college or you're like kind of like graduated high school and you're starting your music career or you dropped out of high school and you started your music career. Or like, for example, if you're like looking for some kind of change in your life, like you're working as maybe a teacher and you're, you, you feel, oh, I don't want to do just teaching anymore. This book will kind of give you some ideas on how you can operate. I would definitely recommend this. Again, these are a lot of concepts that I've been thinking about for a while now. So none of them came as new to me, but I know at some point in my life they would have been extremely new and they would have been super useful. I might not recommend it to the musician who's like a little more advanced in the career, has like a decent social media following, has a decent social media preference and kind of knows about the different ways you can make money doing music. But I feel like it's good to go through these kinds of materials so that way you can kind of see what you're doing, see what other people are doing and kind of get ideas to expand further. So as an overall rating, I would give this book a 7.5 out of 10. I thought it was a pretty good read. I think this is a pretty useful book to have handy. So finally, I want to give kind of just a few select quotes that I really liked from this book. So the first one comes from chapter 5, page 16. Learning should be embraced as a lifelong pursuit. I'm a huge proponent of. I'm about to finish my master's degree and I've been in jazz school for seven years now. Some of my video ideas have even come from me teaching a private lesson to a student, having a realization and wanting to explore more of that. So learning is a lifelong pursuit. Your teachers are still learning. The next quote is from page 50, which is in chapter six. As a musician, you experience some failure. Just remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to greater achievement. This next one's from page 105, chapter nine. This one is, as a teacher, you will have to learn to analyze and deconstruct your playing. If you want to be a teacher, be prepared to go deeper into rudiments and theory, because if you don't know how to explain basic concepts, you will have to learn how. Definitely something that I had kind of a rude awakening for. Like when someone first asked me what intervals were, I was like, yeah, they're just kind of that thing. And you're just like, and the student's just sitting there like, yeah and you're just kind of like sitting there floundering so i had to learn how to just explain these things i had to basically think like if i wanted to teach this to my sister how can she best understand it this next one's the one i said earlier page 243 chapter 14 setting up social media profile and properly branding it will always take an upfront investment of time therefore it might be wise to tackle one or two tools at a time and get a better feel for them and then finally the last one this one comes from page 274 chapter 16 many authors bloggers and experts in the industry tend to present their opinions in an idealistic manner at the end of the day, much of it is theory and speculation, even my own prose. That one I was really happy about because it was like a very honest and vulnerable moment. He basically was like, hey, all of these things have worked for me or I've observed them work for other people. But at the end of the day, this is kind of just like what I think based on my experiences. It's not like a universal truth. And I think it's really important to go into these books with that kind of mindset that these might not be the methods for you, but they are a method that works for someone. So you don't necessarily have to follow these to a T. You can kind of gain inspiration from them and kind of adjust them to your own career mold. But all of it is information and information is useful and it can inform how we do things and make us more productive. If someone else has made the mistakes and told us, hey, look out for this, you are less likely to make that mistake again. The same way when you have a guitar teacher and they point out a mistake and you're like, oh man, I gotta fix that. And you do fix that and you never make the mistake again. If you didn't have a teacher, which I didn't at the beginning, you're gonna make a bunch of mistakes and you're gonna have a lot of bad habits in your playing. And that's gonna stick with you. Some of them have stuck with me through 10 years later. So basically take this as you will, use it to your advantage use other people's mistakes to benefit yourself. So that's about all I have for this book review. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, if you want to check out this book, there's an affiliate link in the description. So click on that if you want to purchase this book, if you're interested in learning more and if you feel like you need a kind of boost in your music business chops. I'm also reading this book right now, Lessons from a Streetwise Professor. If you're interested in these kinds of book reviews, like leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to make a book review on that. And if you don't want to see any of these videos ever again, like comment that as well so I can kind of gain a little intel on what you guys kind of enjoy. But if you made it this far thank you so much for watching if you like this kind of stuff please like and subscribe and i hope to see you next time take care